in Jesus name we're praying in Jesus name we're praying I pray that the Lord will reveal his plan for your life to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that wisdom will be made manifest to you I pray that no one here will take light as darkness no one here will take darkness as light you will find guidance in your part in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Heavenly Father in Jesus name we pray Stay with me, say grace. grace. Or oh, we can do better. Say grace. grace. Say grace. grace. Say grace. grace. Say this is my story. Is my story. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into this today. Today we're going to talk. So this month we've been talking about the power of vision as a Christian. Why you should have vision and why God wants you to do well and be a model of success for Him. Hallelujah. Do you feel the love? Put your hands around someone and just love them and say, I love you. Put your hands around someone. Don't put your hands around somebody and stop forming hard man and say, I love you. I know that sometimes some of them, their breath is not so great, but it's okay just for today. You know, I love you. Exactly. I love you. Exactly. I love you. That, that's so great. I say, I love you. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. How, how does that feel? Yeah. It's human for human, human for human. It's human for human. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word of God today. Let's get into the word of God today. Will you turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 29? Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing us, choir. I really, you know, I know that in the other services there was musical um, sound challenges. But that really blessed me. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. So we're talking about the power of vision, the power of vision. Proverbs and verse 18. So we're going to read King James and read the Passion Translation. The Bible says that, and where there is what? No vision, the people what? Perish. This is one of the scriptures you must know by heart. Proverbs 29, verse 18. It's simple. Where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. Let's read the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. He says, where there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. One of the things I've noticed in life is that everyone loves progress and everyone wants fulfillment. I don't know about you, but everyone wants progress and everyone wants fulfillment. I've never seen someone that says, I hate my life because I'm making too much progress. When people hate their life, they hate their life because... There is no progress and there is no fulfillment. So there are some people that spiritually they are stuck and that's why they are angry with themselves. And there are some people, spiritually they are okay, but their marriage is stuck. Some people it's a finance that is stuck. Some people it's a company that is stuck. And the thing is this, every dissatisfaction in life is for one purpose, is one reason. If you see someone that is unhappy, if you see someone that is dissatisfied, it's for one reason. It's because their inner reality is not equal to their external reality. Every unhappiness and every dissatisfaction is because your inner reality is not equal to what your external reality. Let me give you a good example. How many of you have been here and someone promised to send you money? And when they send the money, instead of saying thank you, you hissed. Has it ever happened to you before? What happened? What happened was that the outer reality, which was the alert you got, was not equal to what the internal reality, what you thought you would get. You were expecting it would send you 2 million, but it sent you 20k. That's the time that when you want to reply, you just say TX and say thanks. Because it's like thank you, but not thank you. That inner check, it's, what, it's, a, it's a vision. It's a mental picture of the future. It's a mental picture. So the reason why people get, so, so the reason why people get you know, very tired, very, very offended, very disappointed, is because there's a vision they carry in their heart that is not happening. I, 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 was, I was going through this story about someone that was dating someone online, and multiple phone calls, multiple messages, they decided to eventually meet up and when they met up it just said this is not what i thought you look like and that disappointment was because inner reality was not equal to what external reality 
every disappointment, every sadness that you experience in your life is because of this gap. It's because of this gap. So, taking us to our question of vision. So, one of the things that God does is that when God wants to challenge you to step up, he puts a vision in your heart. When God wants to challenge you to step up, he puts a vision in your heart. You just really stand because of this vision that's within your heart. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Okay, so let's read some let, let, let's read something very powerful. Luke chapter 16 in verse 19. Luke chapter 16 in verse 19. Luke chapter 16 in verse 19. What does vision do and how powerful is vision? Why should everyone have vision? The Bible says in Luke chapter 16 verse 19. And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. Verse 20. And the Bible says there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. So if you know the story, Lazarus was the Christian guy or the righteous guy. The rich man was the sinner guy. So verse 21, take note of this. Bible says, watch, watch Lazarus. Because this story is one of the most confusing stories. Because if you, if you do really well, it almost sounded like all the Christians guys would be poor because Lazarus was poor. And the guy that was not godly was the one that was rich. The Bible says, and Lazarus desiring to be fed with what? The crops. Let's read together. I want to go. And desiring to be fed with what? Hold on. What was Lazarus' desire? To be fed with what? The crumbs that fell from what? The rich man's table. What was Lazarus' vision? To be fed with the crumbs that fell from what? The rich man's table. And the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So that means that God did exactly what he wanted. Did Lazarus get what he wanted or what he asked for? Exactly. I wanted to see this in the message translation. Let's see the message translation. Very powerful. I want to show you why vision is very powerful here. The Bible says this. There was once a man that was rich, expensively dressed in, in latest fashions, wasting his life in conspicuous consumptions. A poor man named Lazarus covered with sores and being done by this door. Look at the next line. Let's just together. I want to go. All he lived for was to get a meal from the scrap of the rich man's table. The problem with Lazarus was a vision problem. The problem with Lazarus was not God's power. The problem with Lazarus was what was a vision problem. The Bible says all he lived for was to get a meal from the scrap of the rich man's table. Your God is powerful, but how big is your vision? Your God is powerful, but how big is your vision? Your God is powerful. How big is your vision? You know what? Your vision puts a cap on how much God can do in your life. Let, let, let me, do I have a lady that has a small purse here? All ladies always have like this tiny purse. You know, just a very tiny purse. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and Pastor, so you can give me your bag also. Let me pass that. Yeah. Vision puts a cap on what God can do in your life. Listen to me. If all you brought, yes, just stay over here. If all you brought to God is this and say, God, feel this. God is good and kind. He will feel it. But all you have is just this. This is all you have. Then some people come and say, God, okay, I come with this. God said, that's fine. I can feel it. But some of us come with God, I must go. The question today is, that, what vision are you bringing to God? The, see, the, your vision puts a cap on what God can do in your life. Your vision puts a cap on what God can do in your life. The Bible says that, this man, this man Lazarus was desiring to be fed. Do you know, and I'll give a practical story. There was a time in my life, um, we got this facility and we're doing, um, we're trying to pay back a loan because that was the only way we could get a goddess loan. Then every month I'll begin to pray and watch the story. I would say, Lord, please give us money to repay the loan. Give us money to repay the loan. And for three years, we're trying to repay the loan and all of that. One day, God interrupted me. And says, why do you keep praying for me to give you money to repay the loan? Why are you not praying for money to pay the capital and interest and wipe it out? My thinking was small. So the power of God manifests in a small way. Stop praying for a job. Pray to own the company. Stop complaining about how high dollar is. Pray to begin to earn in dollars. The only reason why you think dollar is a problem is because you are still earning naira. By the time you start earning dollar, you'll be like, oh, praise God. Can it still go some higher? 
Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Your vision puts a cap. Your vision. So back to the story. So I will pray. I will pray. And I, you know, and I just got so frustrated. So you know, because every month I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Lord, for this month. For this month. And the moment God interrupted me and said, "Why not believe for the whole thing?" In literally, I think five to six months, we had paid everything. I did not know that my vision was limiting God. The question is this, is your vision limiting God? Is your vision limiting God? You have the small vision, you know, you're like, yes, I just want a small box. And listen to me, a big vision does not mean starting big. Because even big vision are starting in a small way. So the question is, is your vision limiting God? Don't let your vision limit God. God has called us to do the impossible. God has called us to do the... See, some of you need to realize this, that you are the one that God will use to open door for the family. What do I mean by that? I don't... Let me give another story. I don't know if when you were younger this happened to you. There was a box of chicken, meat, or sweets somewhere, and everybody could see it, but no one could touch it. And you were interested. Did it ever happen to you? And you would dance around the table and just say, hey, 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 hey. you're hoping that maybe one other person will notice and say, Do you want some? But unfortunately, nobody noticed you and said, Do you want some? So you keep dancing around. And as we're dancing around, one ch- one of the children from the house just came. And as soon as he just came, he just picked one of the meat, bah, put it in the mouth, and took another one. Said, hey. Ah, so this is how easy it is. As soon as he picked one, what happens? You go what? You go next and pick one. You know what the first child did? The first child was the firstborn. He opened the door. Some of you, God, God wants to do in your life is not about you. He wants to open a new trajectory for those in your family. If the narrative has been that for you to be this lady that does well and does business in billions, you have to sleep around. You have to do this and do that. And you now, you didn't do that. God used you to break the barrier. You did business, you are successful. And people can now say, because of Funtok did it, huh? because of Lydian did it, because of Aisha did it, I, I, I can also do it. Because God has used you to what open the door. Praise God. And that's my prayer for you. That God will use you to open the door for the family. Uh, that amen seems to be those on this side. God will use you to open the door for the family. You know, there are certain lines that families don't cross. I'm telling you, there are families where maybe nobody has built a house. God will use you to open that door for the whole family. There are family where nobody has an international property. God will use you to open that door for them. The family where nobody has become a global figure. God wishes to open that door for them. If you believe, say amen. I mean, let me use a secular example. Look at Nigeria's entertainment industry. How it's easy for Nigerians to pack out stadiums, you know, in London and do concerts in US and do this and this. It's just so natural for us. But do you know that for a lot of musicians from all the nations in Africa, it's so difficult? But the reason why is that as soon as one artist did it, the door opened. Because, you know why the door opened? I may not be able to tell them of what the Namibian is doing. But this one that is in Nigeria is my brother. I know what he's like. And because of that, I can see what God can do. So one of the things, one of the very powerful things about vision is this. Vision puts a cap on what God can do in you. What God does is li- what God does in you is limited by what you see. What God does in you is limited by what you see. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. The second thing vision does, which is very powerful. So vision puts a cap. So if I want God's power in my life to flow in a very powerful way, I remove the cap. My question is that, do you have a compelling vision? That's the question. Some people are just satisfied. You hear what they say, that if I can just have two houses and my kids go abroad, is that what your life is like? Just two houses and your kids go abroad. When you can do more than that? It's like sometimes when I drive and I'm driving this, my other, you know, my nice small car, and I see people that are driving G-Wagon running away from potholes. I'm saying, use this car. Don't waste this car. 
use this car. Don't waste this car. You know, how can you have a G-Wagon? You are running away from sand. What were you built for? I'm asking you, with all your potential, you want to settle for two houses and two cars. And your kids go abroad. With all your potential, your, your speedometer is 260, but you are driving at 60 km per hour. There's so much in you. And God is saying that you are the cap of my power. You are the cap of my power. You are the cap of my power. Just imagine what God did with Deborah. Deborah was a woman. Imagine what God did with Deborah. Remember what God did with Joseph. Joseph was a young boy. And God used him to set the whole economy of Egypt. Imagine what God can do with you. Don't just say, I want a job. Say, Lord, I want to be that person that will run a company and employ 10,000 people. That's the dream. That's the dream. Lord, I want to be so blessed that my scholarship will sponsor 1,000 people to school, both locally and internationally. That's the dream. That my life will be... See, you know, in, in, in my native dialect, there's a saying that says that don't be like the snake that crawls on the rock and leaves no impact. Don't let your life be that way. When you go through life and nobody knows you ever went through life. Someone say Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. The second thing vision does for you is this. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Oh glory to God. I mean look at Banker's testimony. She could have said I'm a widow. You know this is difficult and that's difficult. She went on for it and God showed up. Is it not amazing that once you step out you see the glory of God? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. See what the Bible says. The Bible says this. Looking unto Jesus. And this is what vision does. It says looking unto Jesus. The author and the finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Did what? Endured the cross. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the father. And this is what vision does. The second thing vision does is this. Vision provides you a clear sense of direction and purpose. To a man that has no vision. All parts look similar. I remember some time ago I was offered a political appointment and I said I should come and do this and you know by some of the highest office and I said I really would love to but that's a distraction from my assignments my place is in the pulpit my place is in the Bible my place is in prayer listen to me till I die I can never accept political club I can't be a commissioner I can't be a minister I can't be all of that because my vision is very very clear for some of you, that is your purpose. You need to get that going. But for some of you, and sometimes that's why sometimes I see some pastors get involved. I'm like, I don't know. Thank God I didn't call them, so I can't mark their scripts. See, because once a man has no vision, all parts look similar. All parts look similar. Vision is what makes you to be able to say no, I walk away. And you don't feel guilty because you know that this is not my path. Do you know when Jesus was on earth, they wanted to make him king and they ran away from them because he understood I have to refuse king because I'm the king of kings. Sometimes you need to say no to open a bigger door. Sometimes you need to say no to a door to open what? A bigger door. But every time, every time you see a yes man, a yes man is a man that has no vision. Sometimes, you know, I, I, this guy came to me and th just a challenging story they had a big marital problem i was trying to help them resolve it you know after the wife had cried and cried and the husband had nagged and hours of talking i said you know what let me just talk to you people apart to understand some things so i got the man to me and i talked and i said okay when you married your wife what was on your mind when you married her when you entered this marriage and he looked i said pastor should i be honest i said please be honest he said i was almost 30 years old I was successful in my banking career and I just thought that it was time to marry. And since I was dating now already, I said, let's marry. I said, what do you mean? He said, pastor, to be honest, if it was my ex that was dating at that time, I would have married her at that time. He said, I married that because I was ready. I said, no wonder. Because once you don't have vision, you don't know what to say yes or no to. That's why some of you that are here, by the time you tell me the three people you've dated, I think about them, talk to them, like, ah, why do you date in zigzag? All your, all, all your partners don't have pattern. You dated pastor. 
and you said because we're few, you felt called to the ministry then before you knew it, you didn't entertain her ah, you'd be like ah. <laughs> this is very confusing ah, from pastor to entertainer then the next thing you did the soldier The problem is not the choices. The problem is that it's a vision problem. You can't say no because you don't know. So what you choose to be at any point is who likes you. So if who wants to date you as a pastor, oh my shopping kapala manta, I have a call to the ministry. If the next visit is an entertainer, ha, that's me. You know, all of a sudden you're a dancer. The question is, who are you? Who are you? He says, look at Jesus Christ. What for the joy ahead of him this endure the cross? He said no. So the reason why some people can't say no is because they don't see where they're going. And you have to say no for some bigger doors to open. The question is this. What are you saying no to today? What should you be saying no to today? Can I be honest with you? Some of you need to say no to some relationships. I say relationship, I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about some friendships. The reason why is that that friendship is not aligning with what you're going to. And some of you need to say yes to some friendship because they're taking you to where you're going to. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Your inability to say no to opportunities and pleasures may be an indication of no vision. Or else, how would you explain that Jesus is carried Said no said yes to betray jesus christ you know I, I think about it sometimes did you just really think about it that in two thousand years time we will still be talking about that betrayer that if he has children and grandchildren they will be known as the family that betrayed jesus christ and that even when he gets to hell other people will meet him in hell and be like ah, ah at least me i didn't accept jesus christ but you you betrayed the master you are a sinner The reason why is that Judas Iscariot didn't think about it that way. There was no vision. He had the opportunity to be among the pillars of the church. He didn't make that decision. Question, what do you need to say no to? What food do you need to say no to because of your future? I mean, I, I showed you my mother is 100 years old. But I'm, I'm interested how is she that strong at 100? Is it just by grace? I know it's by grace, but she also did something. The way you are eating, is your future secured? That's why you tap, you tap, you tap, you tap, you tap, you tap, you tap. The way you are eating is your future what? Secured. You eat chocolate, you eat this, you eat this, you eat you do this, you eat at midnight, you eat at midday, you eat seven times in the day, and you say, Father, give me long life. Don't you realize that the things you are eating are the things that are subtracting long life from you? Glory to God. I said glory to God. But the reason why you would discipline yourself and say, I don't want to eat this way, it's not because of today. It's because a time will come that you will reap what you have eaten and make sure that your harvest is good because whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap vision vision once you see people that don't have drive most people that don't have drive listen there's no one that don't have drive people that don't have drive it's a vision problem it's not a drive problem because they've not found anything that will make them stand up strong someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah the thing about vision is this whatever you cannot see when it comes into your life you misbehave I want to get it. Whatever you cannot see, if it comes into your life, you misbehave. Did you notice the disciples of Jesus Christ? They were on the sea. The wind had blown them away. Jesus Christ walked to them. Just as I was walking, they began to scream and shout. Hey, we're in trouble. Hey, a ghost is coming. But was Jesus Christ coming onto the boat? Why did they say a ghost? They had not seen a man walking. Even though Jesus Christ was walking, their mind could not contain it. They began to misbehave. Anytime something comes into your life that you have not seen, you misbehave. That's why when people win lottery, they will waste the money until they have no more money. They will not have wisdom. 
That's why wisdom, this is why vision is very powerful. Because whatever you don't see, once it comes into your life, you just begin to misbehave. That's why you will notice in proper um, monarchy, what they trained king's heir to take over them, they begin to train the king, the heir as a child. What they train him? They train him to have vision. They train him to have capacity. So that when he gets to the throne, he does not misbehave. And for some of them it works, for some it doesn't work. Let vision discipline you. Someone says, someone says, I can't write well. Let vision discipline you. They, I'll, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of habits I picked up as an adult that I never had as a child. Even though when someone was advising me, I never had it. But the reason why is that when I look at my future, my future disciplines me. My future disciplines me. The way you know you have vision is this. Is there something that flogs you and wakes you up? Someone says, I need alarm. If you have vision, you don't need alarm to wake up. Vision wake you up. Vision wake you up. You wake up by yourself. Someone asked me, he said, ah, Sir, what do you take to remain strong? He says, I drink responsibility. And that's vision. That's vision. They're encouraging you to pray. You don't have vision. When you have vision and you know you cannot carry it, you will pray. And you will pray. I always say that the reason why you don't pray is one reason. You have no father who will make you pray. When your father will make you pray, the way you will pray like a prayer warrior, you will be shocked at your prayer potential. You have no father will make you pray. When your father will make you pray, you'll be surprised. Ah, even your wife will call you and say, "Honey, what's wrong?" Like, ah, God must help me. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. Let's close with this. So, how do I receive vision? Several ways you can receive vision. But I wanted to tell you, talk about how to receive vision from God. And the reason why is that sometimes what people call vision is copying. Copying is not vision. Someone's vision can inspire you. But you should be careful about copying somebody. The reason why is that you are not at the pace. You don't have the same mental structure, the same gifting that they had. So, if you copy them, although they succeeded, you can crumble in that area. I was at a wedding yesterday. Lovely wedding. And when I finished the wedding, I, I posted a picture. So I said, ah, I feel like marrying again. Ah. <laughs> While I build a bicycle. Ah. You are married. You saw someone else's wedding. I feel like marrying again. And it's an illusion. First of all, the size of your marriage, the size of your wedding, is not correlated to the success of your marriage. I hope you know. So, and the reason I'm saying so is that one guy, I mean, there was a big problem. One guy proposed to his girlfriend. The girlfriend accepted. Then when they accepted, she got up. He got up. He said, I've accepted. Take the ring. He said, I will not tell you how to propose so that I can propose well. Ah. I said, what, what do you mean? He said, ah, sir. Oh, like that, my friends. There's no picture. I'll just say, nails down. I said, no. He said, pastor, I have my proposal in my head. I will tell him how to propose and propose that way. Keep copying. You'll be all right. <laughs> you know what the reason I'm saying so? The reason I'm saying so is because look at this wedding issue. Bible wedding does not involve wedding planner. All this wedding planner Cake, cook, decorator, buy that train, give me some more things, facial makeup, stylist. All those ones is not in wedding. Those were people that develop an industry around wedding. And they market it to make you think that's how wedding is. Bible wedding, therefore shall a man leave father and mother, join to his wife, the two shall be one. You don't even need wedding gown. Just call me. I bless you. Just call me. We don't need all. City room is okay. City room is okay. I 
And the reason I'm saying so that should I do a big wedding? If you can afford it, great. But why do wedding and have debt? I'm, lo- I'm, I'm so happy when people have great weddings. I'm mean, like the one that went yesterday was really beautiful and I'm grateful that they could afford it. But the point is that it's for those that cannot afford it. That copy, copy, make me. Make me what? Oh, we're doing it for the grams. We're doing it for what? For the grams. For the grams. In Bible wedding, nobody wore coats. Nobody wore wedding gown. They, I'm telling you, at least I know they served wine. I'm not sure they served food. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm just telling you, let's do the Bible way. So I say, ah, I will not wear white. Um, I will not wear what they call that thing. Wedding gown. Wedding gown is not African custom. It is European custom. We wear our showcase to wed. If you wear a showcase, we wed you. Wedding gown, we wed you. T-shirt, we wed you. T-shirt, we wed you. Whatever you wear, we wed you. Just wear something. The reason why is that you just put yourself under pressure. You, you would not say, I want a train. You would not say, my last friends were 12. I want my train to be 24. Because you want to beat somebody. No, they are in provincials. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter. Let's close. <laughs> Let me just close. <laughs> Let me just close. That is true. And I'm saying so because of balance. So I was like, ah, Pastor, didn't you like the wedding yesterday? I loved it. Loved it. But because they can afford it. If you cannot afford it, cut your coat. Oh, they saying. What's that going to your size? If the material is bigger than your size, uncle, cut your coat according to your material. If you can only do trouser, you cut trouser. You sew shirt later on. I'm saying so because some of you are here. Some of the brothers are here. They are waiting for 20 million to do wedding. Wed this year. And the thing is that the girl also is saying, he said, yes, he said, my husband is working on what? What is he working on? Is that not the reason for the fornication? Is that not the reason for the fornication? It's, you are, you are in, in your, ah, dating for five years. You say, Pastor Vin is ready. Our parents are ready. But the only problem is that we are just waiting to gather money, gather money, gather money. First Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> Somebody say Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2. So how do you get a vision from God? See what the Bible says in verse 9. See what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. And this is what we're going to pray from here. The Bible says, But as it is written, Eyes has not seen, neither has he heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man. What? The things that God has what? Prepared for them. That So watch this now. There are things that God has what? Prepared for them that love him. So there are things in your future that you are not aware of. So what happens? How do I know what God has prepared for me? As I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, God opens my eyes and all of a sudden I can see the things that are prepared for me. What does that mean? So here am I, I'm praying about my business, I'm praying about my future. And as I'm praying, I just see that I have another store in Milan. I don't know where Milan is, I've not even been there. But all of a sudden I said, my God, God has shown me that there will be a store in Milan. I begin to walk towards it, but it is for me because it was prepared for me. I'm not just working because my neighbor did this. I'm working because praise God. So how do I know what is in f- and, and this is what I do as a pastor. Let me tell you how I pray. On my phone, I don't pray scattered. Mondays, I have what I pray for. Tuesdays, I have what I pray for. Wednesday, Friday, I have like that. So when I pray, I'm saying, Lord, I'm praying about this. Then God will show me 
and say, this thing you are praying about, this is the next phase. Once I see it, I go for it. The problem is that if you can pray, you will see. The problem with non-praying people is that they cannot see. They are as blind as bats. Were you not here last year? When I told that this year will be this way it is. I told you. I said this will be tough. You were in the service when I told you that I saw a sitting governor die last year. I told you. I said this year will be tough. I said it'll be tough till this time. Go back. The videos are online. Praise God. So I say, how do you know? As you pray, God opens your eyes to see. So I say, it's time to get married. Did he show you it's time to get married? So I say, it's time to resign and start my business. Did he show you it's time to resign and start your business? You will just enter one chance. He said, because my friend has started saying, ah, when I heard Sister Bankers, I was motivated. Be careful of motivation, no. Because you can motivate yourself into trouble. You've heard what they testified. Did you hear what they heard before they did what they did? Praise God.